Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Just got back up to Saratoga yesterday. Looking forward to going on the track after we get done doing our show. All right. Well, let's do that show, Matt, so you can get right to the track. Um, last week, I, I thought there were two very impressive uh, winners of big... Uh, Breeders' Cup implication races, Arthur's Ride in New York, Adair Manor out at Del Mar. What would you think of those two, Matt? Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, uh, I- important races. Uh, I've liked Adair Manor. That was a nice. Uh, that was a nice win against the uh, a pretty good field and Arthur's Ride. Wow, uh, I, I was surprised by that result, but ultimately, I guess I wasn't that surprised. But man. He smoked that field. Yeah, I've always thought he was a talented horse. This was actually a stakes debut. Uh, ran him off their feet. Impressive. Uh, with all the rain this weekend, Matt, we were thinking about doing the four-star Dave, uh, the Arlington Million, of course. But with all the rain and uncertainty and short fields, we're going to stick with uh, the uh, plan for uh, the early Travers preview. Th- this Travers stakes $1.25 million dollars. Grade one on Saturday, August 24th, part of a great weekend at Saratoga. Uh, Looks like a blockbuster. Looks like maybe the race of the year, Matt. So we're going to focus on that if that sounds good to you. Sounds good to me. Yeah, it really looks like it's going to be a a loaded uh, Travers. Absolutely. Before we talk about this year's horses, let's look at this race as a champion making race matt because uh you see the travers of recent years there we have uh the last nine uh on the list and and you see a bunch of champions there last year archangelo jenna antonucci uh that was the third straight travers winner to be named a three-year-old champion matt this has become for a lot of reasons, I think light, you know, the horse is more lightly raced, uh, how hard it is to, to run in or dominate uh, two or three legs of the Triple Crown. For a lot of reasons, I think this Travers has become as an important three-year-old race as any in the country, if not the most important. Yeah, I think that's interesting what you said, Brian, with the, uh, you know, the way racing is involved and how much they race and that, and, and that the horses are starting later on, that the the Travers, which has always been such an important race, has evolved into maybe a bigger race. Yeah, yeah. The Travers has become very important, and it's going to be important this year. Let's run down this list real quick, Matt. Archangelo, unfortunately, four of six lifetime, never ran again, but he won the Peter Pan, the Belmont and Travers in succession, uh, a surefire three-year-old champion. The year before him, Epicenter was actually second in the Derby, second in the Preakness, But his Travers win kind of clinched his three-year-old championship. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. You can see those uh, see those champions coming out of the Travers, you know, and and so many other. uh, Even though they didn't win championships, horses like Tis the Law and Code of Honor, Catholic Boy, uh, uh, winning Grade Ones on turf and dirt, uh, uh, um, and, and then going back to a couple of Bafferts. Yeah, yeah. Baffert had lightly raised horses uh, that moved into the lead in the division with big performances in the uh, in the Travers in West Coast and Arrogate uh, champions, as you see there. That's the yes on the far right of our graphic there. Keen Ice, of course, 2015. Who can forget that one? Uh, He beat the champion, American Pharaoh, uh, who had to deal with Frosted for much of that race and Keen Ice ran him down. Matt, did you know Kino Ace uh, retired three wins out of 24 lifetime starts? But, uh, you know, he was getting good there. The Belmont, he was third. The the Haskell, he was second. And then he won that famous Travers. Yeah, uh, and he was ridden by uh, Javier Castellano in that race who has uh, gone on to pile up so, so many uh, Travers wins. I don't know what he's at now, seven or something like that. Wow. Wow. We didn't mention essential quality, Matt. He is the only horse on this list who was a two-year-old and a three-year-old champion. And of course, essential quality won a lot of big races in his career. In fact, when he won the Travers, he was eight of nine lifetime 
at the time before uh, ending his career with a third place finish in the Breeders' Cup Classic. There you see. Anyway, in the last nine years, uh, five of the horses that won the Travers were champions. We certainly saw, thought that Tis the Law would be the champion when he won the Travers. Authentic took that away from a code of honor. You know, maximum security got the championship, but code of honor was certainly in the running. Catholic boy, a four-time graded stakes winner on the grass. He won consecutive grade ones on grass and then dirt into the Travers. Uh, and, and Key and Ice were the four that didn't win a championship. But uh, you can see how important the Travers has been in the three-year-old championship race. And without further ado, let's take a look at the early field as we see it, Matt. Um, I have a feeling we, we're going to get more than eight. I, I hope I'm right with that feeling. But right now, I, I feel pretty good about this eight. You'll see on the bottom of the graphic there that we have Dragoon Guard, Muth, and Seize the Gray as also eligibles. Um, Maybe Muth is the most likely of the three to run. Let's talk about them real quick. Dra Dragoon Guard has won the Indiana Derby and West Virginia Derby. He's four for four this year for trainer Brad Cox. Yep, but Brad Cox, uh, <laughs> whatever you think, you know, he just seems to have waves and waves of of three year olds these days. That you know, with the ones on a Derby trail earlier on and 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 into the triple crown races and now uh, and now this dragoon guard showing up uh, and uh, uh, putting together four nice wins in a row west virginia derby indiana derby this is still a big step up to face horses that are on our travers list yeah it would be a big step up for dragoon guard but an interesting up and coming horse maybe we'll see him in the pennsylvania derby instead of the travers sees the gray might be also going to the pennsylvania derby instead of the travers matt sees the gray of course won the preakness after the pat day mile win uh was kind of on top of the three-year-old world there for a week or two but uh two races at saratoga really didn't show up very much he, he backed out of the belmont pretty badly and was not much of a factor last time in the jim dandy yeah, uh, certainly uh, off form a little bit. I don't know. You know, Lucas, he's going to keep running him. Maybe he just, you know, maybe the Saratoga surface this year is just not to his liking. And the other big name we have on the also eligible list, Matt, is Muth. And Muth might be the most interesting because Muth has never run a bad race. He's never finished worse than second. He's a grade one winner at both two and three. This is Bob Baffert, as we saw on the last list with horses like Arrogate and uh, west coast but for him to go in the travers and let alone go in the travers but then to even think about winning the travers off a five-month layoff matt that is an awful big ask of muth it is even of even of bob baffert but uh you know uh, we got to think about the things that he uh did last year he was at the top of the he was at the top of the class with that win in the arkansas derby which is the last time that we have seen Muth on the track. But again, like I said, uh, coming back from that long a layoff, even though he posted a really big workout just the other day, which I think has got uh, Baffert thinking about coming to the Travers. Yeah, Muth has been working for a while, uh, but yeah, five, five months since that Arkansas Derby win, of course he was scratched as the morning line favorite from the Preakness. Let's look at the eight that we feel likely. Again, I think we might have a straggler come in. I, I, I even uh, uh, went to a couple connections uh, to see if they might actually be pointing for the Travers, but the, these are the only eight that I think are pretty good about. Uh, and I think we have three potential favorites in here, Matt. Then we have a couple of very good horses uh, for Chad Brown right underneath them. And then we have three very good long shots. Uh, we have them all at 20 to one. But I tell you what, you can't discount horses like Batten Down, Corporate Power, and Honor Marie. Uh, Batten Down is a winner at 10 furlongs already. Uh, probably the best bred horse in the race to top it. And, um, you know, he looked, he looked a little inexperienced, but he was... Uh, uh, very competitive in the Jim Dandy until the last uh, 16th of a mile or eighth of a mile. Yeah, uh, again, he ran, you know, he ran into some good horses in that race uh, uh, for sure. Uh, but uh, it took him a while for Bill Mott to figure him out and, and get him to the winner's circle. He won that maiden, won the Ohio Derby. Uh, um, 
he'll have to be able to do better uh, in the Travers. Yeah, he'll have to move forward. But the race that I saw in the Jim Dandy, he looks like a horse that would move forward. So uh, possibly an interesting long shot there. Possibly an in interesting right. long shot. And, and a super well-bred horse as well, Matt, is corporate power. Shug McGahey, of course, has won the Travers uh, multiple occasions before. And corporate power uh, is coming off some good stakes uh, form, uh, a little bit like Batten Down in where he's going to have to move up for the Travers. But I saw nothing in the last couple races to think that corporate power might not be on the way up into the upper echelon of this class. Yep. Uh, f uh, tra veteran trainer, Shug McGahey, uh, he had a second place finish in the uh, curlin earlier at the uh, in the saratoga meeting and won the uh, sir barton uh on the uh, on pimlico weekend both of those races were restricted stakes races certainly a horse that has shown talent but once again uh, i'm going to be facing one of the most loaded fields of three-year-olds uh in the travers yeah a couple couple more points in his in his favor he's still lightly raced he's getting better son of Curlin and Road to Victory. Love that breeding. And Corporate Power, uh, I think Unmatched Wisdom kind of controlled the race pretty easily on the front end. And Corporate Power kept coming into Curlin. So watch out for him as a long shot. Number three, of course, is Door Knock. And, and let's uh, let's switch gears here a little bit, Matt. I, I think there are three potential favorites. And, and I'm not sure who's going to be the favorite. But I think Door Knock might be the most deserving of the three. Torpedo Anna is going to get that. She's She's been going against Phillies and has won all four graded stakes for fun this year. And then, of course, Fierceness, the two-year-old champion, the Kentucky Derby favorite, the romping winner of the Florida Derby, coming off a nice win at the track. Let, let's take a closer look at Fierceness a little bit, Matt. He is two for two, two very nice performances at Saratoga. Yeah, and you mentioned, Brian, essential quality uh, earlier on being a, a horse that was a champion at two and at three. I guess Fierceness maybe has a chance to do that. Should he win the Travers and, and continue to advance? We shall see. Uh, um, I, I was happy to see Fierceness uh, get a little bit of redemption with that Jim Dandy victory. Matt, I have a lot of questions for you th this week. I, I hope you don't mind. Uh, number one is, do you think Fierceness uh, could be favored in here, or who do you think is the most likely horse to be favored? Um, you, you know, uh, uh, Todd Pletcher, uh, Rapoli, uh, the, those horses tend to be uh, the favorite often. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, for me at least, you know, any questions that I had about uh, about Dornock got answered with his performance in the Haskell. Uh, my my is that Dornock will be the favorite. I think it's going to be really close, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Fierceness ends up being favorite. And as much as people love the Phillies, I wouldn't be shocked if Torpedo Anna is the Travers favorite this year. I I, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's uh, there's a big question who's going to be favored. Getting back to fierceness, of course, his debut win last year at Saratoga was a big one. And then he returned. He finally returned to Saratoga with the Jim Dandy, where he went wide down the stretch, let uh, Sierra Leone rally on the inside of him, well inside of him. But uh, fierceness held him off well. Pretty impressive performance in the Jim Dandy after a very big disappointment in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, that's for sure. And and I think we should talk about a, a couple of questions here with Fierceness. Number one, is a mile and a quarter uh, a little bit more than we want? he wants? I think that's a, a real worry for him as we look at him in the Travers, as son of City of Light, who was probably best uh, at eight furlongs. And uh, Fierceness, uh, his one try at 10 furlongs, he, he backed out pretty good. But on the other hand, he likes the track. So Fierceness... Uh, Questions, as always with this horse, it seems like, but uh, on his best, certainly a big threat in the Travers. The other two horses that we're talking about for favoritism, Matt, let's talk a little bit more about Doorknock. Uh, Doorknock is the leader of the three-year-old male division. I, I think there can be no doubt about that uh, after his win, what you uh, alluded to it, it last time in the Haskell. Uh, 
Door knock has been a mile and a quarter. Uh, door knock has won over the track. Door knock has good tactical speed. Door knock likes to fight, fight you down the stretch. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is what's not to like about door knock. I agree with you now, Brian. Uh, and, and what's not to like, it's hard to put a knock on, on door knock at this, at this point, certainly, uh, uh, shown that shown all those versatile uh, features that you mentioned, Brian, and and uh, that win in the Haskell uh, impressed the heck out of me uh, uh, because he turned back uh, mind frame in there and he and he turned him back uh, with authority. I mean that determination uh, at the end of races uh, is is an X factor that can make a, a good horse into a great horse. Yeah, we, we look at Doorknock, another supremely bred uh, individual. We look at Doorknock's five races this year. Don't forget he won uh, a very game win in the Remsen to end his two-year-old season over Sierra Leone. So we look at his five races this year. He really does have a big excuse in the Kentucky Derby where he was knocked out in the start drawing the rail, never really got close, kept trying to to finish mid pack, but a uh, terrible trip at the Kentucky Derby and the bluegrass, they tried to take him off the lead. And I don't think it le- uh, worked when Sierra Leone beat him there. Um, Doorknock is the leader of the division. As I said, d- does somebody take it away from him I- I- in this race? Well, maybe fierceness, um, fierceness is wins in the Florida Derby and Jim Dandy pale a little bit in comparison to what Doorknock's accomplished this year, but win the Travers over Doorknock, and I think fierceness could become the leader of this division uh, two weeks from Saturday. Uh, one champion we know will be in the race already is Thorpita Anna. Matt, I, I, I don't see any scenario where another three-year-old filly can uh, overtake her as good as Thorpito Anna's been. And she's the third horse that would vie for favoritism as we see it today for the Travers. Thorpito Anna has been a monster in the grade two fantasy, grade one Kentucky Oaks. Grade one Acorn at Saratoga and grade one Coaching Club American Oaks at Saratoga. Can the Philly beat the boys, Matt? Oh, I think she's got a legitimate chance, Brian. Uh, she's got a perfect season. Uh, uh, she comes out of these races uh, 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 without any problem. I mean, we're talking about a horse that, uh, you know, she she's a big, solid horse. And, and I think that that is important when you've got when you go into a spot in the travers against the boys um, i i think it's great that kenny mcpeak is taking a shot in here he certainly is uh about as confident in his horse as you could possibly be yeah he's shown that confidence all along don't forget she worked out with mystic dan early in the year and i think mcpeak knew what he had in this philly who's won uh, all but one of her races, her only loss, of course, came at two. Uh, Torpedo Anna is not a itty bitty filly by any means, as Matt says. Uh, she she's a pretty strong bodied, solid filly. Um, she's on the other hand, she's not uh, the physicality of a Sierra Leone or, or, or Doorknock, uh, for, perhaps, but uh, she is a solidly put together filly. One thing I do worry about, Matt, we we talked about Doorknock and fierceness. Uh, Sierra Leone and, and a couple others in here, they've been a mile and a quarter already. Torpedo Anna, as good as she looks running away from these fillies, she's never been farther than nine furlongs. Uh, she gets five pounds on the weight allowance for females in the Travers, but uh, never been more than nine, I think is a disadvantage to her going against the, the big names we're talking about. I think it's a, you know, I think it's a legitimate question. Maybe the only question uh, uh, that that's clear that we would have to think about with Torpedo Anna going that uh, going that extra furlong. But I don't know. It, it sure seems like she's going to be able to handle it. But you know, you're going that extra eighth of a mile, and you're not ahead by twelve lengths coming down the stretch, and you're in a battle with. Whoever it might be, whether it's Doorknock or Fierceness or Sierra Leone coming late, that's a whole different scenario. Yeah, I, I agree. It is a question mark she'll have to answer. I, I like the way that she runs to get the extra furlong. I don't think Kenny McPeak worries about it. Don't forget he um, 
probably would have run her in the Belmont. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here a little bit, but probably would have run her in the Belmont way back in June at 10 furlongs, if not the presence of the Kentucky Derby winner, Mystic Dan, in her stable. So, um, yeah, confidence. You mentioned confidence in Torpedo Anna in that stable, uh, and, and certainly Kenny McPeak has shown a ton in his star filly. Matt, all three of those horses we're talking about as potential favorites, Doorknock, Fierceness, Thorpeda Anna, Thorpedo Anna, they all have speed or tactical speed. I, I think that's another thing we look at here. Um, who's the fastest of the three? Maybe it's Fierceness with Doorknock and Thorpedo Anna chasing, but it's hard to know for sure who's going to be on the lead and how fast that pace would be if this is the Travers Field. Yeah, uh, that that is certainly true, but, uh, you know, what? Pretty sure that uh, fierceness will be going and and uh, seeing who's going to try and come after him. Yeah, yeah, I I, I wouldn't suspect Doorknock wants to be too far behind and Torpedo Anna uh, as well. Although Torpedo Anna maybe um, uh, uh, of the three has shown the ability to pass horses uh, in her career. Uh, speaking of horses who can pass horses. We have to talk about Sierra Leone. Now, I said three potential favorites, and I truly believe that. I don't think that Sierra Leone could be the favorite in this year's Travers Matt. But I think, on the other hand, he's going to get a lot of money. You look at his past performances where he's always rallying all those good running lines where he just keeps making big moves. Now, he's lost three in a row after winning two nice graded stakes to start the year. He's lost three in a row, and I, I think that's why he won't be the favorite in the Travers. But, but on the other hand, you can see these odds. He's not far behind the top three, and with good reason. Yeah, absolutely with good reason. Uh, uh, you know, the second in the Jim Dandy, the third in the Belmont, the second in the Kentucky Dirt. We're talking about three three of the, the best uh, three-year-old races of the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, heading into the Jim Dandy, I was – willing to say, you know, I, I don't know if I want to categorize Sierra Leone as a horse who uh, is content with getting close, but uh, it happened again in the Jim Dandy. So, I mean, I, I am starting to think that that might be the case with Sierra Leone, but uh, yeah, uh, talking about him being the favorite, I, I don't think so here, but maybe uh, not too far behind fourth choice. Yeah, fourth choice because of the top three. That's how good we're talking about this race. He has some things going in his favor. I said the other three all have speed or tactical speed of the favorites, and Sierra Leone is the one that likes to rally. Sierra Leone certainly has uh, uh, performed well, if not winning at 10 furlongs, has performed well, if not winning at Saratoga. So there's a lot to like about Sierra Leone. If he's the fourth choice, I think Chad Brown has the fifth choice as well, uh, unless maybe – Muth shows up and runs in here. Unmatched Wisdom is uh, kind of the antithesis of his stable mate. Uh, different ownership, but uh, different running style. Um, uh, certainly a different record because he's coming in off a bunch of wins. He's never lost, man. Bunch of wins, never lost. Three for three, Brian. Uh, you know, a late developing three-year-old for Chad Brown. Uh, impressive. And all three of his races moving from uh, a maiden special weight to an allowance and then to a stakes race winning that curlin uh stakes um sure seems like uh, uh there's plenty of good things ahead for on match but here we go in uh, uh the tip top of grade one races yeah and this looks like maybe the toughest grade one race of the year uh, and that could be true i could be saying that after the breeders cup classic that's how interesting and how, how strong this field is. Unmatched Wisdom has been nine furlongs twice already. He, uh, he's, been, he's been a mile impressively. First two races, he stalked and pounced and took over easily. Uh, last time was the first time that he went gate to wire when he did it in the curl. And I, I said he had the pace advantage over corporate power, and I think that's very true. Uh, he won't have that same type of pace advantage here at the Travers, but... Uh, you know, unlimited potential, uh, uh, unmatched wisdom would need to move forward off that curling to win this. But who knows who's to say he can't off of three impressive wins to begin his career for one of the best trainers in the business. I think we talked about batting down in corporate power. That only leaves one other horse to talk about here, Matt, on our probables list. That's Honor Marie. 
uh, horses, uh, people that play uh, trips, trip handicappers will say Honor Marie is a live long shot in the Travers map. Well, a live long shot in that, you know, uh, uh, early on as a two-year-old, Honor Marie was uh, uh, as promising as, as any three-year-old, as high on the list as any three-year-old, uh, winning the Kentucky Jockey Club and, and moving on to the Derby Trail, but uh, um, hasn't had a victory since then, you know, uh, second in the Louisiana Derby uh, on the Kentucky Derby Trail, a uh, pretty good eighth in the Kentucky Derby, a fourth in the Belmont. Uh, um, uh, so has had some rest now since the Belmont Stakes. Uh, a heck of a nice horse, but here we are in this field and the the 20 to one on our uh, on our Trav Travers preview morning line ju just shows uh, what a tough spot this would be for Honor Marie. Yeah, uh, Honor Marie will be a long shot in here. But on the other hand, he, he was bothered quite a bit. He got banged up and roughed up early in the Kentucky Derby when he rallied for eighth. And uh, he certainly was bothered down the stretch of the Belmont when he ran fourth. He's, he's, he's a little bit fresher of a horse than a lot of these in here. Uh, and uh, if you think, you know, those troubled lines in both the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont mean a lot, Honor Marie is another horse you could certainly think about in this driver stakes, Matt. That's that's our that's our top eight. Uh, we'll see nominations come out in a few days here. Who else is nominated? We, we feel good about the eight. Fierceness, I guess, is still a little bit of a question mark. He, he, we talked about the three who we called also eligible at this point who were very iffy for the race, but uh, there might be a, another horse or two that pops up. Look at that field, Matt. We're excited about this Travers, which uh, as we tape this is just 16 days away. Yeah, no doubt, Brian, excited about the uh, about the Travers. Uh, you know, and, and I don't know. I have a feeling that uh, Baffert's coming east with Muth to make the race uh, even more interesting. As much as I like Muth, I will bet against Muth, and I uh, hope he gets a lot of money in there. I, I, I can't play such a good horse off of a five-month layoff in this field at a mile and a quarter. But anyway, hey, yeah, we, we look forward to all comers. Hopefully, we do have more than that really good eight that we're talking about. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, hey, I'd be happy with, eight, uh, with those eight in the race, uh, uh, Brian, for sure. Again, uh, uh, Thanks for every, and thanks everybody for watching the show. I, I, I've met several of you uh, over the summer uh, uh, in the paddock at Saratoga, at Monmouth Park, uh, at both places. So as always, Brian and I really appreciate that you watch the show uh, week after week. Yeah, if you haven't yet uh, uh, turned on the notifications, if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, uh, please go ahead and do that. It sure helps Matt and I turn on the notifications, leave us a comment, leave us a thumbs up. Even that uh, we greatly appreciate here at Horse Center. Also, thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Folks, we'll be back next week. I think we have the Alabama to talk about, among other things next week, Matt. But until then, everyone, good luck. Hope you enjoyed our Travers preview show. We'll see you right here next week on